Studies show that by 2053, black Americans will have a median net worth of zero dollars. In today's video, I want to show you why this is happening and what we can do to close the racial wealth gap. What's going on guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist, and I'm on a mission to make black men as successful as possible. So please, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe because this is a message that needs to be heard all around the world. Now we got a big problem in our community. We've worked very hard as a people with little to show for it. And studies show that in 2016, white families averaged 10 times more than the average black family when it comes to median wealth. Why is that? In today's video, I want to outline the top three reasons as to why we have such a racial wealth gap and what steps we can take so that way we as a people can get to the next level. You can't have financial freedom without financial literacy. This is the very first thing that we need to do to close the racial wealth gap. The honest truth is that we've never been taught about money as a people. We haven't learned it from our family. We haven't learned it from our friends. We haven't learned it in school. We haven't learned all of the principles that we need to have true independence. Now, a lot of us, we think we know about money, but how many of us really know about the core concepts, like the difference between an index fund versus a mutual fund? So many of us don't even realize the difference between making an income versus our net worth. And it's not until we understand these different concepts on financial literacy that we can ever do better as a people. Because one thing that my mom always told me growing up was that a fool and his money is soon parted. So if we don't have the wisdom on how to manage our finances, it's always going to slip from under us. Now, the second big killer that's widening this racial wealth gap is student loans. I myself had almost $100,000 in student loan debt that I had to get rid of. But we have to take a very active approach towards getting out of this debt. Because most black folks, whenever we go to school, we have to take out student loans just to get pay for tuition. Now, I know there's scholarships and other things out there like that, and we got to be more conscious of how to take advantage of them. But the studies show that almost 80 percent of black families end up taking out student loans whenever we send our children to school. This means that even though we graduate from college and we end up getting these good jobs, we're spending all of the income from these jobs paying on the interest of the student loan debt. A lot of us have not been financially educated about how to pay the debt off. That's the reason why whenever we're paying these different predatory loans, we're always paying the bare minimum on the account. We're not fully paying it off. We're deferring, we're forbearing. And as a result, the balance only becomes higher and higher by the day. Not only do we need to get the financial literacy under us, we need to take the education that we get and we have to apply it because student loans is arguably the number one thing that's crippling the wealth from the black community. This also goes into the reason why entrepreneurship is very important also, because we got to stop getting in the habit of taking the best and brightest of our people and putting them down a pipeline where we tell every last one of them, you got to go to school and make good grades. So that way you can get a good job and be able to get a good car and a good house. And you're going to be able to live life like a crystal stair. We have to redefine the narrative of what success looks like for us to thrive as a community. And one of the core places where that starts is us working through our debt situation. Now, let me tell you what it was like for me when I had over $95,000 of student loan debt. So like most of us, whenever I was going to college, I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I was signing up for all of this debt. I thought that it was free money. I was just trying to get out of my parents' house and cut up. And quite naturally, as a result, once I graduated from college, 
I never thought about the seriousness of all of the debt that I had racked up. When I graduated, the cost of my student loans every month was more than the cost of my monthly rent. It was by far my single largest expense. And if you don't know how to prepare for that in advance and start to maybe offset some of that by paying it down as quickly as possible or taking out scholarships, we're gonna to continue to go into a deeper and deeper hole. We also thirdly have to change the culture within our community. We got to get off of this flex culture, y'all. We're living in this social media era where everybody is trying to flex on everybody. Look at me, I got the nice house. Look at me, I got the nice car. Look at me, I got the $10,000 handbag and the $500 phone. We are constantly spending money that we don't have to impress people that we don't like. And that is a big deciding factor as to why we're working hard with nothing to show for it. When we're talking about raising our net worth as a community, that starts by raising our assets because our net worth is simply the difference between your assets and your liabilities. We're oftentimes taking out all kinds of liabilities thinking that they're assets. We do things like buy up homes, not knowing that a house backed by a mortgage is not an asset, it is a liability because it's not putting any more money in your pocket. We oftentimes think that just by going to school, we're guaranteed to have a great job once we get out of college. And then so many of us struggle to find employment, all the while student loan debt is racking up more and more. We got to stop living in a culture where being financially irresponsible is okay. We talk about popping bottles, making it rain. We do all kinds of stuff. But if we're going to close this racial wealth gap, we have to create a culture where being financially responsible is the thing to do. And we have to create a culture of entrepreneurship. If we want to have real stake in the wealth of America, we must have business ownership because business ownership is one of the key factors to creating wealth all around the world. Now, black people only own 2% of all businesses in America, which means our survival is predicated by going to other communities and asking them for a position to work. When we have employment, and 98% of our community, that creates a dynamic where we're paying more taxes on all of our dollars than entrepreneurs who are able to get a lot of those taxes written off. Y'all have to understand that not all money is the same. When you see people getting into different investments like real estate, uh, the stock market, business ownership, etc., not only are they putting their money into high growing assets, they're also using their money where they can leverage the different tax benefits that are afforded to them. This is something that we have not been educated about. And this is the reason why even if we had all of our student loan debt forgiven, because I know that's something that we as a people are praying for with Joe Biden, even if all of the student loan debt was forgiven for our community, we still have to have the education on what to do with our money once we have it. Otherwise, it's going to circulate right back into other communities and none of it is going to be recycled back to us. This is the reason why we must have our own businesses because we have to have a way of keeping our dollars within. Now is the time for us to stop looking the part but focus on being the part also. Oftentimes, when we take on these jobs, we instantly buy up all of these cars and all of these homes, all of these designer clothes to make it look like we're doing it on a level that's beyond where we're really at. If we can get rid of this flex culture, if we can get rid of our student loans, and if we can educate our community about strong financial principles, these three pillars alone will go an extremely long way 
to make sure that we've created generational wealth in black America. So if you want to know more about how to create generational wealth, I want to invite you to my free masterclass that's going to take place very soon. All of the details are in the link below. In this masterclass, I'm going to be showing you how to create a six figure net worth without working at a boring job that you can't stand. I want to show you how you can create real assets, generate passive income, invest wisely so that you can have a legacy to pass down to your kids. One of the biggest factors as part of the racial wealth gap is what other communities are doing to create generational wealth. We have to be a part of that game. We have to have real assets and real freedom to be able to pass down to our kids. So if you want to come and learn more about how to create that six figure net worth, make sure that you sign up. The link is in the description below. Lastly, I want you to leave me a comment and I want you to tell me what you're going to do to help close the racial wealth gap. Are you looking to start your own business where you can give employment to others in the community? Are you looking to invest so that way you can start creating passive income? What is the number one step that you're looking to take in 2021 to make sure that you are lessening the racial wealth gap so that way your family, your friends, and your kids have the exact same opportunities as everyone else? Leave me a comment and I'll see you on the next lesson of Black Men's Career.